Okay, sorry. All right, so we have found our mean, which was the 1600, and then we found our differences, right? So those are your differences, and some of those differences or deviations are positive, some are negative. And so to make sure that we are talking about a distance or a deviation that is always positive, we're squaring all of those numbers. So that's what we get when we square all of those numbers. That's messy, so if you can't read my handwriting, let me know and I'll read something out to you. Okay, so after we square all of those numbers, now we want to find the sum of all of those. So we've got to add all of that up. And that gives us 2, 1, 4... Eight seven zero. When we add all of that up, I know it seems like it should be higher than that, doesn't it? But it's not. That's our sum. And then notice what we're going to do. It says sum sum the squared differences. Now we're going to divide by n minus one. How many values are there in this set? There are seven values, so that means we are going to divide this by six. So we always divide by one less than however many values there are in the data set. That's what's referred to as the degrees of freedom. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, so it's just a, uh, just trust me that it's a statistical thing that they found where dividing by the n minus one helps get us a better a better, more accurate standard deviation, okay? So we're always gonna divide by one less than however many values there are. And the n is just the six? N is how many, n is always the number of values in your data set. Okay. Right, okay. So we've divided by six, and when we divide by six, what do we get? God bless you, we get 35811.6 repeating. Guys, there's a special name for this that you need to be aware of once you've done that division. This is referred to as S squared. That's the variance. You need to know that term. So S squared is the variance. We're going to square root, exactly. So to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of that particular value. So the standard deviation for this set is approximately 189.2. OK. It's not bad. It's a little tedious. If, if it's a long set of numbers, but I'm not going to ask you to do this for a large set of numbers. So we'll talk about that in just a second based on what you're going to do for homework. So I'll explain that shortly. All right, so do me a favor. We've got to find where this is. Yeah. Okay. Grab your calculators. Try finding that standard deviation by hand for that set. All right, I, I heard you guys talking about the mean. So you guys got the mean is 53.5, right? I know some of you guys are still working, so just keep going. But I kind of want to um, kind of verify, see where we got, if we got the same thing. Hopefully we did, and if not, so we can go back and kind of check and see where we made a mistake. So the sum of the squared differences, what did you get for that, Chris? Uh, one. 37.5. Oh, I got a little higher than that. Sum of squared, yeah. No, that's what I the got. Sum of the squared differences. All right, let's compare your your squared differences. Tell, read through those for me. Uh, um, 12.25, 2.25. Hold on. Uh, you can't read oh, your own handwriting. I can't, you're right. I can't read my own handwriting. Yeah, that's a 7. So that would be a 7. So 72.25. 2.25, 30.25, 6.25. I'm reading over your shoulder, so you just couldn't read your 72.25 over there. Okay, so the sum of our squared differences, you should have 197.5, right? Did we get that? Did everybody get to that? 
Okay, and then we divide by how much? By what number? Five. Five. Good, we're dividing by five. Remember that gives us S squared, which is our variance. And what's that value, Katie? 39.5, good. And then we take the square root of that, Jackson, what'd you get? 6.3, or I rounded, uh, I went another place. So 6.28 for my standard deviation. Sounds good. This is standard deviation, All right? Okay. All right, questions on that process. You are gonna practice that for homework. I've got a worksheet for you. I will explain. We're gonna do a little bit more on the calculator in just a minute with that as well, okay? All right, onward, what's the next page we're going to? Let me see here. Okay, I think it should be the next page on your... Scroll a couple of pages. There it is. It's there. Flip a couple of pages, because I, I just didn't include the IQR stuff in there. So skip over that IQR stuff. And on the, it's on the back of the, like, two pages away, right? Okay. So let's talk about and let's think about what this is really essentially telling us, what the standard deviation is telling us about a set of data. So if you notice, it says, explain what the difference is in each set of data and how to interpret this difference. So let's think about that for a minute, right? We have two sets of data a set A and a set B, and set A and set B, our mean is exactly the same, but our standard deviation is different. So I'm gonna draw a visual to kind of help you with this, and we'll, get, we'll do more with this on down the road. For those of you who have been in site class, you've probably hopefully used um, normal distributions to kind of represent data. But I want you to think about what this is telling us. If both of these data sets have a mean in the exact same place, um, but the standard deviation is different, then that basically what that's telling us then is data set B obviously has more of a spread of its values than data set A, right? So data set B has more spread of values, A has very little spread. Spread. All right, so on a number line, let's think about what this would be saying, right? If we have a number line here, let's make this 20 right here. If we have um, a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of four, there are other ways we got, or can draw this and that we will draw this, but for now I'm gonna show you using just a normal distribution. Basically what that's saying is that our mean is gonna be, I'm gonna draw this as a curve rather than as a histogram. I'm gonna, uh, psych students will kind of understand, the rest of you may or may not depending on what you have seen previously. But imagine that these, this is a histogram that's basically been kind of smoothed over with um, drawing a, a curve over, over the course of that particular shape of, our, of a histogram. So if the spread for that, if we're saying that that is what the graph of data A would look like, where we have our mean right there in the middle, and then we have, um, a spread or a standard deviation of four in each direction. It would look something like that. Don't get too concerned about the numbers. I just want you to kind of think about the shape. Um, we'll talk more about the numbers on down the road also. What it means is that for the curve for B, it basically means that the curve would be more spread out. The mean would still be in that same place at 20, but that the curve is gonna be out a little bit wider in each direction. Go ahead, you gotta hold that tight up front. So, 
so that's just for those of us who are kind of more visual people that we need to kind of see and, I, I, and, and imagine are our minds. Here's where our mean is, our mean's in the exact same place. But now let's talk about the fact that this spread is telling us there's more value, there's larger values and they're more spread out for this data set B as opposed to data set A. All right, what's happening though with set G and H? Okay, yeah, so different midlines or different places on the number line where they're going to be, but the shape or the spread of this particular graph, those are exactly the same, aren't they? So our spread's the same, but our mean is a little bit different. So think visually about what that would look like. Um, if our spread is the same, let me, let's see how I can do here. I never managed to do very well with this in terms of drawing them similarly. Uh, that's about as close as I'm gonna get. Okay, so this would be set H here being represented and this would be set G being represented here. So I'm trying to show that those graphs are essentially about the same in terms of the spread. Um, okay, what do we notice about data set R and T? Okay, so this mean is the same here. In this case, we didn't really write anything here. I guess I should go back and write something here. Let's, um, same spread. I'm trying to remember how you worded that, Hunter. How, what did you say? Different midline. Okay, I like that. Thank you. Okay, so same place on the graph, but different spread. So R has a much larger spread. T has a very small spread. Okay, so visually, Um, so let's draw T first. That one's going to be way... Okay, that is T. Um, and actually for R... I'm trying to color code. I'm kind of trying to spread that out. It's actually probably not going to go as high um, necessarily, and we don't have to be too concerned about that, but we want to show that it's kind of more spread out along the number line there. All right, this is a totally different problem. This doesn't have to do with anything up above, like the A and the B and the C and the D from up above, okay? Any of those values. It says, explain what we know about the mean and standard deviation of graph A, B, C, and D and how they compare to each other. So let's make some comparisons here. talk about the means first for each of them. So what do we know about the mean for A compared to B and C and D? Yeah, the mean is smaller. So this, the mean is the smallest actually there at 20. What do we know about the mean for B and C? Okay, so it's greater than A, and it's the same as, B is the same as C, right? So C is, the mean is greater than A also, and it's the same as B. What about the mean for D? Oops, let's put some numbers attached to that. That looks like that's at about 52. Okay, what about the mean for D? 
It's the largest and it is at 85, right? Okay, so that's info about the mean for each of those, A, B, C, and D. Now let's talk about the standard deviations for each of these. What would you say about the standard deviation for A compared to B and C and D? Okay, so standard deviation for A is greater than D. I would say the standard deviation for A is definitely smaller than C, and let's say those are about the same for, so standard deviation, let me put an A in there, sorry. Standard deviation for A is greater than D, is less than C, is the same as the standard deviation for B. Okay, so the standard deviation for B, we'd have similar type of information, right? Standard deviation for B is equal to the standard deviation of A. I'm just kind of abbreviating here, just for space sake. Standard deviation for B is definitely less than C, and it's definitely greater than D. All right, what will we, standard deviation for C, what should we say about that? Greatest. Greatest. And what about standard deviation for D? It's the smallest, isn't it? Okay. Questions, comments about that? What do you think? You kind of get a good visual for that, I hope. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we're going to do a little bit of review that's on the next page, and then I'm going to ask you to grab graphing calculators to do some work on that next page. So, If mean, median, mode are almost equal, then we're looking at something that's pretty darn symmetric. So this graph's going to, just a quick sketch, it's going to be symmetric. So probably about, I'm trying to draw somewhat neatly, but quickly too, so this isn't going to be great, but get you the general idea. Is that what we got? Yeah. Any other questions or thoughts on those? Something a little bit different that somebody did? Yes? Like you did kind of more uniform, which is... The mode are almost equal to the mode. Okay, the mode is going to be the highest yeah. bar on the graph, right? Because so that's where the most data I values are. Saying. So it could be. I would be fine with you saying it's uniform also on that. I like that. Good. Good thought. Uniform would work also, I, would, I think, on that one. Okay. If the mean is less than the median, then which way is the skew? Yeah, right. Skewed right. left. It's skewed left. So it should trail off to the left, which means, I don't know, something about like that, right? That mean skewed left, correct? Okay. The mean, median, and mode are all different from each other. So that one's a little bit trickier to deal with. Um, let me show you what I did here. Kind of what I've got drawn in here is <laughs> now Hunter's playing with the Yeah, no, that one's not easy to use because it's not going to punch. If you're not careful, it's not going to punch the holes where you really want it. All right, 
So I wanted to make sure that my mode was way different from like near the middle. So, cause this is where your mode would be. Um, your mean is gonna get drawn towards this direction and your median. So your, I would say median's probably about right here-ish. But mean's probably gonna be a little bit farther to the right on that. Why is that? just because of the weight here of all of this. So that one's not, that one's not easy to think through and I probably could have done a better job. I probably should have more, more weight over here. Katie, hold on when she gets back. All right, mean and median are almost equal, but the mode is different. What'd you guys come up with for this? Uh, I did something like that. You did well. There you go. Bro, Sutton's why? got it. Nah, right. I love it. Right. I love it. I love it. Sutton, Sutton got this. No, mine's still right. Okay, so there's two modes. This would be bimodal. So make a note about that, maybe. I did. It was oh, I mean, symmetric. No, no, you just didn't see my graph. Oh, you're not? Okay. My graph is a right for a second. So mean and median are almost middle, uh, equal. Those would, those would be right in the middle, but with it being bimodal like that, then that kind of adjusts things. All right, let's talk about A, B, and C, D, what, whether we're going to use mean and standard deviation or median and IQR. So what about letter A? Oh, mean. mean. Okay, so mean and standard deviation. For letter B, IQR. median and IQR, good. For what, are the, what do you think about C? Standard deviation. Yeah, you, I, I'd median. probably be okay with median. either of those. Probably more so median and IQR, but I, I would say we would want to compare just to kind of see. What about letter D? What do you think? I'm calling it it's nice. symmetric. It's mean. On that one. Yep. Okay. Um, flip over to that. For a quick no, second. For the standard deviation, remember there are two that are listed there. I want you using the S. Not the little circle sigma one. I want you using the S. And I'll explain why in just a second. So find the mean, median, standard deviation, use S for that on your graphing calculator. Then based on what you see, you, you're comparing your mean and your median. That should help you decide whether the graph, your data set is roughly symmetric, whether it's skewed left or skewed right. So think about what the shape is also. So tell me that information also. All right. Um, who, I have a few A's. Sutton, who else was an A? Oh, me. Ellie and Chris. Okay, let's compare. So, Sutton, what'd you get for the mean? Uh, 65.1. That's not what I got. That's not um, what I got. Oh, no. Ellie, what did you get? I got 62.1. Okay. I got 62.1 also. Okay. So, Ellie, what'd you, uh, Chris, I'm sorry, what'd you get for your standard deviation? Oh, It's the S 13, sub X. No, no, no. Okay, 14.1. 14.14. 14. Or 5. And your median? 63.5. Sutton, I'm guessing a number got yeah, plugged in wrong. All right, so what would you say for the shape of that graph? Oh, I don't know. Ellie, you got there. The, um, me the mean and median are oh, awfully close. The mean and median are awfully close, but the mean's a little bit lower, so I would, I would be okay with that. It's probably uniform or maybe probably. symmetric, but there might be a little bit of skew. We're gonna call this uniform or symmetric. The technic, it was like that one on the quiz, though. Okay, now we're jumping down, guys. You need to write this stuff down. We're gonna jump down to set E. Where am I E? Oh, right here. Okay, Christian, who else is E? Who else is E? I have E. 
E. Okay, so mean, let's compare what we get. 62. 62, good. Standard deviation? 32.93. 32.93, is that what you got, Claire? Yeah. Okay, and for median, what'd you get? Also 62. Also 62, so what would you say about that set like based on the mean and median? Okay, so it's symmetric. All right, guys, take a look at those two data sets. Look at data set A. Look at data set E. I can't see it. Okay. Our means were pretty, pretty similar. Very close. Yeah, that's Our medians were also pretty close. Not exact, but pretty close. Look at the difference in the standard deviations, though. Just the spread less. Well. Huge spread difference, right? So the standard deviation for data set A, look at those values. Oh, they're, I mean, they're, yeah, there's a little bit of spread there, but the standard deviation is saying that this standard deviation is 14. Look at the spread, though, for data set E. Look how spread out those numbers are. We've got a low of 12 and a high of 112. No, there's a lot condition. more spread there, right? So that's what I'm wanting you to kind of notice or see on these, okay? We're going to do the same thing, make some comparisons with each of these data sets. So B and F we're going to look at, C and G, D and H. Our, take a look at set B and set F. Notice for set B, we're looking at a mean of 206.1 and our standard deviation was 3.78. Guys, that's a really small standard deviation. Look at how close all of those numbers are to each other for set B, right? Set F, the standard deviation, a bit bigger, 16 for our standard deviation. So there's more spread on those values, right? Okay, onward, okay. Yeah, letter C is a, has a little bit of skew to it, but look, mean was the same. We're comparing though, I want you noticing the difference in the values for our standard deviations. For this data set, those are big numbers for data set G, patent set. The standard deviation is really small though, right? It's a 6.01, so that's, those values are all very close together, right? Whereas data set C here, Christina's set, look at the spread here. We've got values in the 300s and we've got values up here in the 800s. Okay, all right, last set here. Here, so maybe a little bit of skew there, but it's pretty uniform there also. Guys, notice the spread, standard deviation. That's what I want you thinking about. Standard deviation for this set up above is five and a half. Standard deviation for set H is 18 and a half. So much more spread out. So I'm hoping Number one, it was to give you practice with doing that on the calculator because you need to know how to do that. And I've got to explain about your homework in just a second. Number two, to get a, an idea of what the data sets are going to look like when we have these standard deviations that are very different, whether they're very small, whether they're very large, that type of thing. Okay, on the worksheet, notice these directions. On the front, obviously you are doing this by hand. On the back, notice, practice and compute by hand, letter A and B. So those need to be done by hand. Letter C and D, you're doing those using the calculator. Okay?